Hello everyone, welcome to our vertebrate zoology video. I'm Te Ching Wen and today we, the Fantastic Five, are going to present on the title tree, the morphology difference and living habits of crocodile, alligator and gharial. The following below are our group members. Special thanks to Dr. Nuru and Prof. Sharu for the guidance. Hi and a very warm welcome. I'm Arvind Tagarajan, matrix number 1442. Today I'm going to explain the history, origin and also the lifespan of crocodile, alligator and also gharials. So first of all, the order Crocodilia includes crocodile, alligator and also gharials. So first, crocodiles. Crocodiles have been in the world for 240 million years ago and crocodiles are categorized as the old world creatures. So the crocodiles have been roaming the earth earlier than the ancestors, which is dinosaurs. Crocodile is the common ancestor for Arcosauria and also the lifespan of crocodiles, for example for saltwater crocodiles it can live up to 70 years while the Nile crocodile can only live up to 50 to 60 years. Next the alligator. So alligator have been roaming the world since the Cretaceous period around 53 to 65 million years ago. Alligator is categorized as the new world creatures and also alligator has a lifespan of 30 to 50 years old. Alligatoroids have been the common and close ancestor of alligators which are found uh, now. Next are the gharials. Gharials are roaming the earth since the gestation period around 20 to 30 million years ago where gharials are categorized as the new world creatures and gharials are the common ancestor of Thoracosaurus from the Mesozoic era which roamed the earth around 70 million years ago and also gharials lifespan is around 30 years. So I'll pass this slide to the next presenter. Thank you. Having a better understanding on the history and origins, what are the morphology difference between them? The crocodile order can be differentiated by their length, weight, and average speed. They undergo a dramatic increase in size from hatchling to adult. Over its lifetime, it can grow from a 30 cm 80 gram hatchling to a 600 cm 1200 kg adult. A 24 increase in length and 15,004 increase in weight. Crocodiles can grow up to 6 meters and weighs up to a ton, with an average speed of 30 km per hour. Alligators have almost the same length of a crocodile, but they weigh less than them, which is only up to 450 kg, and travel at 32 km per hour. Garia is the shortest among them. They are only 5 meters in length after reach maturity, but can reach up to a ton, which is similar to a crocodile's weight. Garia's higher speed can only reach up to 24 km per hour. We can also differentiate them by their colours and scale patterns. Crocodile have a lighter olive green colour. It will lighten its colour when going from darker enclosure into brighter enclosure. It has a bony scale called osteoderm for protection. The ventral side of the body has smooth and rectangular plates covering it. Alligators are darker compared to crocodiles. They are normally blackish grey in colour. Their scales are oblong, pony plates covering their entire body, arranging in transverse rows. A fun fact on this order, their eyes can glow in the dark similarly to a cat's eyes. Next is the Garia. They are normally light olive, tan or combination of both colours. Garia will turn darker from dark enclosure to lighter enclosure, which is totally the opposite of crocodiles. They have a thick skin covering on the smooth epidermal scale that do not overlap. All members in this order also consist of porous scale, which is homologous to the lateral line of fish. That's all for me. I will pass the slides to the next person. Thank you. Thank you! I'm Wong Holong with metric number 148930. Now, I will describe other morphological differences for the crocodiles, alligators, and also the gharial from the jaw shape, bite pose, and also the teeth placement. So now, let us look at the jaw shape. The jaws of the crocodiles and alligators look similar and are more difficult to distinguish among them. So we can observe that the crocodiles have the long and pointer V-shaped snouts which are used to feed on a variety of prey, while alligators have round and broad U-shaped snouts used to break the bones and also the sharks. The jaw of the gharial is the easiest to identify but is distinctly long and thin jaws. The jaw is adapted to catch the fish quickly. 
Next, the crocodile can accept the most powerful bite of 3,500 pounds per square inch. The following one is the alligator. It accepts 2,900 pounds per square inch. Then the gorilla accepts the weakest bite force of 1,006 pounds per square inch. Lastly, we look at the T plasmid. The crocodile has the same width of the lower and upper jaws and the teeth fit along the margin. The upper teeth interlock with the lower when the crocodile closes its mouth. So the lower jaw teeth are not visible when the mouth shut. Next, we look at the alligator. Alligator has a wider upper jaw that overlaps the lower. It overlaps the lower. So the teeth in the lower jaw fit perfectly in the sockets of the upper jaws when the alligator closes its mouth. And the alligator has the blunt teeth. Okay, now we see the gara. The teeth at the front jaw are the largest thing they are used for grasping the prey, especially the fish. And the gara has the sharp teeth. So that's all from me. Thank you. Now I will pass to my friends. Kevin Bugila 146970 will be sharing about the differences in lingual salt glands and integumentary sense organs between crocodiles, gerules, and alligators. In crocodiles and gharials, the salt excreting glands are located on the tongue immediately below the lingual epithelium and are responsible for the excretion of sodium and chloride ions. The salt glands appear as 20 to 40 distinct pores on the posterior half of the lingual surface. Lingual salt glands, the modified salivary glands on their tongues, which are used for excreting excess salt ions from their bodies. As for the integumentary sense organ, which is an evolved multi-sensory organ which contain multiple pools of sensory neurons. This transformation of a diffuse sensory system, which has allowed to evolve a highly armored yet very sensitive skin. The integumentary sense organ in the skin acts as a sense organ because the epidermis, dermis and the hypodermis contains specialized sensory nerve structures that detect touch, surface temperature and pain. It is full of nerve endings that are ex exquisitely sensitive to pressure and vibration, even more sensitive than human fingerprints. Now let's compare and contrast the differences present in crocodiles, alligators and gharials between lingual salt glands and integumentary sense organs. As for the lingual salt glands, gharials and crocodiles are distinguished from alligators by the presence of salt glands on their tongues. Although alligators have the same structures, they are no longer useful because they can no longer secrete salt. Crocodiles and gharials with salt glands are more tolerant of saline water. Besides, saltwater crocodiles can dwell near the coast for extended periods of time before venturing into the ocean in search of food. Alligators love freshwater bodies and can only survive in saltwater environments for a limited period of time. As for the integumentary sense organs, alligators and crocodiles have microscopic sensory pits around their lower and upper jaws that detect pressure changes in the water and aid in the detection and capture of prey. For crocodiles, they have these senses all over their bodies, whereas alligator and gharials only have them in their jaws. According to research, these receptors are involved in chemical reception and salinity detection. They help differentiate the skin of alligators and crocodiles, regardless of their function. Thank you. My name is Li Xiaoji. I'm going to talk about the living habitat of crocodile, alligator, and gharial. For the living habitat of crocodile, all crocodiles tend to congregate in freshwater habitats such as rivers, lakes, wetlands, and sometimes in brackish water and salt water. For example, freshwater crocodile live in freshwater, while the American crocodile and the saltwater crocodile both live in brackish water and saltwater areas. The crocodiles live throughout the tropics in Africa, Asia, Australia and the Americas. The alligator primarily live in freshwater. The two extant species are the American alligator and the Chinese alligator. The American alligator live in freshwater environments such as ponds, marshes, wetlands, rivers and lakes. Majority of them inhabit Florida and Louisiana. The Chinese alligator usually chooses low altitude sites rich in fresh water, such as marshes, lake ponds, and streams as its habitat. The Chinese alligator currently is found only in the Yangtze River Valley and parts of Ajanshan provinces. The living habitat of Gharial 
is the clear freshwater river system congregating at river banks where the water is deeper. They are not well suited for land, so they generally only leave the water to bask in the sun or to nest. There is only two living species. The Indian Gheria, which found in India and some surrounding areas, and the Force Gheria in Southeast Asia. Finally, uh, let's move into the conclusion part. Researchers believe that these animals share a common ancestral origin, but they are separated by over 40 million years of evolution. Therefore, the foregoing characteristics are very obvious physical disparities between these three reptiles. They are, however, innate distinctions between such as behavior. Freshwater crocodiles are the most violent of these reptiles, while alligators, saltwater crocodiles, and gharials are more submissive. However, environmental factors such as temperature, habitat, and the presence of other animals also influence reptile behavior and their activities. Thank you.